have you had any any training at all in, in, in voice or a lot of the time the yep. training comes from listening to others yep. and hearing what you think sounds mm. Mm. acceptable mm. Mm. and I think using your voice is well it's like an instrument isn't it yep. and it's the instrument I use particularly for the radio mm. uh, to tell a story mm. or to hold a politician mm. to account mm. or mm. to entertain someone mm. to play music mm. To, mm. to talk with someone on the phone mm. about what's going on in their lives mm, mm. and you can use your voice in a variety of ways for mm. that of course yeah and um can you um, give me an example well i suppose if someone is talking to you about something that's traumatic in their lives mm. you know your inflection might change mm. you might put on a, a more sympathetic tone mm. so mm. you know you would be mm. i suppose you might lower your tone slightly mm. Mm. rather than being too animated mm. Mm. Um, I suppose that's one instance. Another instance, perhaps, if you're interviewing a politician who's avoiding mm. a question, yeah. which you know is their job, yeah. then mm. you can be more forceful. And yeah. You can start to yeah. press them a little harder and yeah. be more willing to interject yeah. when before you might be stepping back slightly to yeah. listen more to what's being said yeah. Yeah. because they're telling their story. Yeah. You know, if to get a point across, you might use your voice in a different way. Yeah. So your, your approach to using your voice... It depends on uh, various factors. It depends on your um, your guest, um, how you might want to be received from their point of view, or depend. It depends what their agenda is, I suppose, as well. Not only um, might might they want to take control, you don't want to let let that happen. Uh, do you you know Do you have an ad- not not an agenda, but you've got you. I suppose your agenda is time. Um, you've got to fill in a certain topic or slots you know like, like we're trying to do now <laughs> you know, do, do you have any any of those I mean, obviously you do but what sort of a, what, what you know I, I suppose it's not particularly connected to your voice but I know what you're saying yeah I think um, of course when you're filling a radio program yeah for instance yeah it, it depends if it's a news based program yeah or if it's uh, more entertainment based yeah so your tone will change depending upon what it is you're doing yeah the program you're presenting yeah so if it was more light-hearted then then yes you know you mm. might inject mm. a bit more personality in mm. uh, to reflect the story you're mm. telling maybe mm. Mm. Um, but you can still throw personality into news mm. yeah you, know, you can still be a personality driven news mm. interviewer mm. Um, again it comes down to your confidence uh, to, to tell the story to ask the right questions mm. To, to use the right tone mm. with the questions you're asking mm. And, mm. and perhaps not to be too belligerent, maybe. Mm. Mm. Um, and I suppose, again, you're using your voice in a multitude of ways to yep. achieve those ends, yep. that means. Yep. So, yeah, uh, you're thinking of the topic, you're mm. thinking of who it is you're interviewing, mm. uh, why you're interviewing them, what story they have to tell, mm. and a lot of it is listening to their story, mm. but knowing when... Mm. The audience might have heard what en- enough what yes. they've, they've needed to hear. Yep. Um, and again, sometimes your guests will be very animated and and, mm. and very authoritative, and mm. sometimes they won't be. So mm. you have to try and coax them into telling mm. them a bit more, opening mm. up a bit more. Mm. And you can use that again in the way that you might use your voice. Mm. So it, mm. in a way that I might lean in yep. to to try and. Mm make myself appear more mm. visible mm. Mm. on the camera mm. you can do the same thing with your voice and yep. that you just yeah lean in with your voice and a smile and, and that can mm. be picked up and sure so tell me more about the yeah the, yeah the, the new car you've just bought yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, fantastic yeah yeah great yeah and yeah uh, and you're pushing them into in it in a way you're See. you're calming their own nerves around yes. the topic that they know more about than you yes of course yeah. So it's, yeah, it's putting someone at ease. Yeah, and uh, so you 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 use your voice to to do to do that subconsciously. I, I well not necessarily yeah. over time it's become subconscious. It, it becomes more habitual. Right. Yeah. So you you're using your voice habitually to to put someone at ease, um, to give them the, the, the I, I suppose to give them the floor space to uh, you know to give their story. I suppose in a way uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I think I think it's important that you know as an interviewer, mm. 
you're not afraid to let someone open up and tell their yeah. story yeah which is the whole reason why they're on yeah but all you are if you like is the conduit yeah between that story and the listener mm, mm, mm. Uh, but it's an important conduit you mm. know, because you're trying to keep the whole story flowing mm. and together and mm. meaning something and, mm. uh, and not being you know not being mm. full of jargon or mm. uh, and knowing when to step in and intervene mm. yeah and that could be you know if if the story is has run out of legs if you mm. like it's got no more no further to go so then yeah. it's finding having listened to what the interviewer yep. interviewee has said sure is finding another another question to go in on, mm. and that might be pre-planned mm. based on some research or some evidence. Mm. You know, you've you've done some mm. research beforehand. Mm. You know what you're talking about, so yeah. then you can then take it to the next level. Mm. Mm. I think from a broadcaster's point of view, using your voice is so important. You need to know how to use it and when to use mm. it, how to change the tone of your voice and the mm. inflection of your voice. Mm. Not be afraid of a pause. Mm. And rather have a pause around the words that you use mm. than be umming and ahhing and yes. uh, um, uh, mm, uh, yes. yeah. Mm, but have I would rather I would rather stop. Yes. While my brain is engaging. Yes. Thinking this Rethink. is the word I need to use. Yeah. This is the way I need to mm. express something. Mm. Mm. Don't be afraid of a pause because mm. I think that can sometimes be mm. better than having mm. these extraneous noises going on. Yeah, it's very much like um, it, it's very much like music. Sometimes it's what you don't play is as important as what you do play, and I think it's the same thing with language and communication. I think sometimes a pause, you know, can be a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> but it can also be yeah very powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Yes. Because you've drawn someone in. Yes. And if you're telling a story yep. or you're interviewing someone, yep. I'm interviewing the leader of the council. Yep. You've got to make twenty million pounds worth of cuts. Yep, yep. Why are you having to make these cuts? Mm. Mm. And mm. say no more. Mm. It's, it's it's a clear, mm. obvious question. Mm. Leave that person then to mm. Say what they need to say, yep. listening very closely to it, mm. and when the, you think they finished, mm. but I, I still don't understand. Yes, 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 yes. Because you're yeah. making twenty million pounds worth of cuts, but yeah. you've spent thirteen million pounds on yeah. this. I don't know, new cars yeah. for yeah. your yeah. senior officers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's outrageous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But there's no umming or ahhing there. But you're stopping and thinking yes. about what I'm going to say yes. in the most powerful way possible yes. using language yes. that's not too flowery. Yep. I mean, it's better to use something than it is to utilise mm, something mm, because mm. you don't speak in that way. Mm, mm. You know, don't find a word that complicates a situation. Mm. Speak naturally. Mm. Speak with warmth. Mm. Speak with a smile mm. because a smile really mm. comes through. Yeah. And with the radio, unlike mm. television, where mm. you have pictures to mm. tell a story, mm. this is true theatre of the mind. Mm. Football commentary is another prime example. Mm. Football commentators on the radio are having to explain absolutely everything, down to the smallest blade of grass mm. sometimes, mm. that a TV picture will say straight away. Mm. So it's using words, language, in a way that tells a story mm. or sets a scene and that could be, for instance, an episode of The Archers. Mm. You know, uh, you know where you are because you have the sound effects of a field yep. and someone walking through a field. Yep. You know exactly where you are and then you can concentrate on the language around it. So mm. much of what goes on goes on in the background. Yes. You can focus what's going on in the foreground. Yep. So, so location and environment is taken care of with folio or, or uh, yeah. With yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. What tips would you have for anybody coming into the business, the, the broadcasting business now? And I suppose my question is re related to where we are um, with social media now, for instance. Well, there's market saturation these okay, days, right. I suppose. Yeah. Um, and everyone can be a journalist yeah. with the different platforms available to yeah. people. You can be a citizen journalist you could be a citizen mm. journalist. Mm. I could be a citizen journalist. Mm. 
you, you never know where you're going to be when something will happen mm. and everyone carries a smartphone these days yeah and people have the ability to mm. publish that material mm. whether mm. that's on YouTube or mm. on Facebook or mm. snapchat or any of the others Instagram mm. Twitter a lot of that material has come from the public absolutely most of it right. comes from the public and right. the main terrestrial broadcasters if you like and mm. satellite broadcasters mm. All have a presence on social media, yeah. such is its importance, mm. and the fact that there is this proliferation mm. of social media channels, mm. and millions and millions of people mm. use it every single day, yeah. and publish their own material on it every single day. Mm. Mm. And there are some, well, you know as well as I do mm. that, that there are people whose mm. job is to be mm. the YouTuber, yeah, and. They're as much a journalist as I am sure. because it's all about the stories you tell. Mm. And whether you reach an audience of 10 or mm. 10 million, mm. Mm. it's still broadcasting or mm. publishing mm. content. Mm. So it's essentially down to mm. the individual mm. to work out what suits them. Mm. Now, it could be that not everyone's going to walk into the BBC or Channel 4, mm. ITV, mm. Sky, mm. whoever. Mm. But that doesn't mean to say they can't be experimenting with their content mm. in the social media world. Yeah. So a YouTube channel, a Facebook page. Mm. And again, it's being able to tell a story, create content that others might be interested in. Perhaps you want a business. Mm. It's being able to present yourself in whichever medium, whichever forum you're in, mm. in a clear and concise manner. Mm. Mm. And it's, I suppose, again, if it's visual, it's knowing to stay at least still whilst you're talking. Mm. It's knowing not to um and ah and yes. find these superfluous words you don't need. Mm. It's about creating something that's professional mm. and something that's that someone else wants to see. Mm. There's no point broadcasting something that's you know so narrow in its field mm. that nobody wants to see. Mm. It. Mm. Although I suppose that might even fit into mm. a niche market. Mm. Right? Mm. Um, but I suppose. My advice to anyone wanting to get in to the media industry, mm. and it's you know there's a lot of competition, mm. you know, in terms of getting into the media yep. industry. There are a number of ways, and it depends what you want to do. If you mm. want to become a journalist, mm. a news journalist, then you know I would recommend you know you you become you get a university degree and mm. possibly a, a master's in in broadcast journalism, mm. Mm. and whether that's accredited to. You know uh, the newspaper industry or the broadcast media industry there are opportunities yeah but that's not necessarily the only way in because mm. you know radio television is always looking for people that have uh, a knowledge of something else something right. different maybe. yes mm. so it could be that you're a, an expert in world history mm. you can still be a broadcaster and an expert in world history that is your field within mm. broadcasting mm. yes does that make sense absolutely you yeah. know, or a musician, or mm. uh, a, a carpenter. Mm. Uh, whatever mm. you do in life, mm. you can pass on those mm. skills, and it can be of interest to someone mm. in uh, a broadcast sense. Mm. Yes. Know? Whether that's looking up how to wire a plug or how to mm. make a lasagna. Mm. <laughs> you know, there's mm. the, the the scope for you to uh, to do that and to publish yeah. it to a wider audience. Yeah. So you have to do that in a way that's, I think, that looks professional, that looks as though you've thought about it, you're thinking about the words you're using. Mm. You, you might not necessarily have a, a teleprompter, mm. but, you know, bone up beforehand. Check, you know, think about what it is you're going to say. Yes. Think about what your end result is mm. and then find the best way to explain it mm. in, in the simplest form possible. Mm. Mm. Good. <laughs>